Hi guys, it's Amy here. Um, so we've been looking at Turnitin, we've set up a submission and now we're actually going to go and uh, mark our uh, assignments now. So if I just hop on over to Blackboard. And we can look at quick marks, um, feedback, as well as excluding our sources that's all available in Turnitin. Uh, for our marking. Um, just wait for Blackboard to load. There we go. So now we're, yeah, we're in Blackboard. This is the submission that we set up earlier. This is where students will see it and they'll get into it, but we go into it in a slightly different way um, because we want to uh, just go into the inbox and we want to find our students' work and start marking our students' work. So to that, it's course tools down here. I've already got it open. If you don't, you'll have to, to click the arrow or click on course tools to get it open. And it's alphabetical, so all the way down to turn it in assignments. Uh, and then here we have our turn it in assignment. And if I just click on the name of it here, I can get into it. So this is the inbox um, and I can see here I've got my, my students who've already submitted work, but students that haven't submitted yet. I can see the title that they've given their work uh, and I can see too, I can see the original file as well as the original title that came with the, the file there. Um, here we have the similarity. So this is the plagiarism score. So here we have Tam. Tam has only done 0%, good boy. Um, and we have Jimmy here who's got 80%. So we're actually going to go in and mark Jimmy's work. So to do this, you just hit the pencil icon, which will um, take you into Turnitin uh, Feedback Studio. And in the Turnitin Feedback Studio, there's like quite a few different ways to mark work. Um, so it gives you probably one of the widest variety of actually um, giving feedback uh, available on most systems. So uh, here we have the work. I can see it. I can scroll through. I can see images and everything in this piece of work. Uh, one of the ways to score it is final score up here at the top. So uh, we chose earlier to mark out of two, so a zero, one, two system. So I can put in their final grade here once I've done most of my marketing. So to get started, I can actually just simply mark by clicking on the page. So if I click on the page, I get these three icons here in a bubble. The first one is quick marks. So what it does is wherever I've clicked, it will open my quick mark um, bank and I can go through these. So if I go to uh, my new quick marks, uh, here are some quick marks I've set up earlier. Very blue Peter. Uh, and I can actually start choosing which ones I want to use. So let's use great job here, all right? And there it is. I've kind of maybe put it over the works. Maybe I want to move it a bit better to where I want to position it. I can move it somewhere else if I've not clicked on the right part of the page. So it's just a click and drag to move these around. Um, not only can I leave a quick mark, but I can add comments to quick marks. So if I click on it here, I can add a comment. Um, so I've, I've said great job, but maybe I want to elaborate why. Um, Um, so I, I've been, there we go, some feedback there. Uh, students will know there's feedback on quick marks because it gives them this nice speech bubble and they can then click on them when they view their feedback back and they can see this here. So again, if I click on the page, we've looked at quick marks. The next one is just comments. So it just gives you the bubble and I can add comments uh, when, as and when I go through. So maybe this one is, oh, terrible spelling. Uh, all right, so I, I've added a, a comment there, terrible spelling, and I can move that to wherever I need to, where there is terrible spelling. Um, and, and that will let students know that there's a comment there. If you find that you are using similar comments over and over again, so whether it's terrible spelling, great job, um, or, or something a little bit you know different, you can actually convert this to a quick mark. Um, we will be going over quick marks in a separate video and how to manage those, but a very quick way of converting things. So this terrible spelling, maybe I've used three or four times in this student's document, and maybe I'm going to use it in the next student's one. I can convert to a quick mark. 
text. I can give it a title, which will be terrible spelling. And then I can choose which set. So the set I was using earlier was um, a set called My New Quick Marks, but maybe it's um, needed to go into a different set. So I can choose if it was if I wanted to to stick it into a different set. Um, however, I'm just going to leave it as is. Hit save, uh, and that will convert it to a quick mark. There we go. I can see now it's a terrible spelling. That will forever be in my bank of quick marks, and I can then add comments to it if I need to. Uh, use a dictionary. There we go. So there, there's um a way of quickly creating quick marks if you find that you're saying the same thing over and over again rather than having to type it each time use it as a quick mark create it as a quick mark and then you can just uh, drag it from your bank if you need to um, so another way of commenting uh just on the document itself is inline text personally i'm not a fan of this one but you can do it so uh i can So, uh, oh, there we go, spelling mistakes already. Uh, so yeah, I can add text straight to the document. I'm not a big fan of it myself because um, sometimes it can get a little bit muddled. There's not really any way of of um, editing it once once you're kind of done. You you can you can click into it. You can't make it you know different colors. You can't. So it is just blue. Um, so next to this black and the blue, uh, I'm not a big fan of it. Also, sometimes I find that when I click on it and it um, Today it's not doing it, but you I find it always wants to sit on top of your text like this. But today I seem to have it just right where it won't seem to sit on top of my text or I can drag it to wherever I want it to be. Um, so I'm personally not a fan of this, but maybe this works uh, well for you. It's all about personal preference in this case. It's an option and you can do that as well. So that is your first set of uh, ways of marking in Turnitin. Your second set is actually in this area. Um, it's called the feedback layer. And if I just, uh, oh, if I um, click it up, sorry, that's something I totally forget about all the time is you can actually hide all your feedback if you need to. Um, but in most cases, you're going to want to leave it there so you know which bits you've reviewed. But you can actually click on this blue section here. And what it does is it pops out your other forms of feedback. So you have quick marks again here. Uh, and it's notified by the mark symbol. And what I can do is I can cycle through my different ones. And rather than having to click on the page and then add, I can actually just drag and drop these very quickly from anywhere uh, onto my page. And I can scroll through and just drag and drop my quick marks wherever I need to. So that's, that's another way of um, marking. Um, I can also add overall feedback in the text editor here. So this um, will sit on the uh, right hand side when the student views their paper. If they choose to download the paper um, with the feedback, it sits at the bottom of the document. So this is for, I would say, your feedback summary, it's overall feedback on the whole document. I wouldn't use this to comment on, you know, in section one, you were talking about this. I, I would use things like comments and quick marks for that and then use this for overall um, uh, feedback. Another thing you can do is you can actually leave voice uh, comments up to three minutes and you can just start recording. Uh, if I start this, it will ask me to use my microphone. I'll hit allow and then immediately it will just start recording and I can say what I want about this piece of work to the and they get a little bit more of a personal feedback experience that way. So it's not so much using quick marks and comments, it's actually hearing your voice and hearing some, um, you know, someone that they recognize and, and they're used to, to hearing uh, actually speak about their work can sometimes be a little bit nicer. Um, downsides of this is you can't edit it. So if you've said something wrong, um, you know, if your dog has started barking in the background, which mine does on occasion, um, it's going to be stuck in there. You can't edit it. So you either kind of leave it as it is or you chuck it and start again. Um, but again, it's only three minutes long, so it doesn't, it's not too um, time consuming to, to re-record that again, if you need to. Oh, yep, that's okay. Um, so another kind of feedback option you have is you have rubrics. We've not attached one to this, but we will talk about rubrics in another video. 
So if you're interested in rubrics or grading forms, um, you know, look out for that video and we'll go into detail about those there. Um, so something as well is your map overview. So um, one of the things that Turnitin does and why we love it so much is because it checks for plagiarism. So we can see how much of the students' work is their own. In this case, uh, we've got 80% plagiarism. The reason for that is because I've submitted this paper probably about 80 times, it feels. So uh, it's a good way of seeing how much plagiarism there is. But you can actually go into details. So not only do we have 80 here, but I can see uh, if I click on this, I can see which are plagiarized, which is most of it in many cases. But we can get a breakdown of, of um, the plagiarism. So most of it is uh, Aberdeen College. So because we started off as Aberdeen College, uh, we are now UNESCO. It still unfortunately is known as Aberdeen College via Turnitin, um, which is a shame because we are UNESCO. But uh, again, it's, it's something that is there and you can see where it's gone to. Uh, I can also see that it's also been submitted to, uh, to Long Beach at one point. Um, we can see that some of it's come from an internet source. So this is actually from the BBC website. So we can see that it's actually pulled up the fact that this is from the BBC. Uh, and we can see other bits that are plagiarized as well. So for example, uh, if the students work, they had maybe quoted some hadn't finished their quote properly, we could actually go in and exclude some of these if we needed to. So if I hit exclude sources, uh, I can choose which ones to start excluding. And I can choose as many as I want. I could choose all of them if I wanted to. But let's just pick a few of these and exclude them. Let's pick some of the big ones as well. That one for fun. Exclude. So I've excluded 11 sources now. Hasn't brought down the percentage in this case. But that's simply because I've uh, submitted it so many times. But in many cases with your students, if they have made a, a small error somewhere, uh, you can exclude some sources and it actually will bring down their score in many cases. Uh, and it can be something usually as simple as they haven't quoted correctly. Um, and that's uh, sometimes the reason for that. Um, so this is your, your all sources. So you can see pretty much, again, this is everything in here. Uh, and you can see how much of a percentage most of these things are. Um, so when we set up, we had picked certain things to be excluded and certain things not to be excluded. So we picked quotes. Um, but we hadn't picked bibliography and we hadn't chosen any small sources either. However, if we needed to now, we can actually apply these. So um, the example I gave with the bibliography was a PowerPoint that had bibliography in the contents page and it then excluded the rest of the presentation. Um, so again, you could choose this to be turned on, apply changes and get a new report, um, or you can have it turned off and apply changes and get a new report. Same with your small sources. If you've decided, OK, quite a lot of my students have had high plagiarism, but it's maybe because they're quoting case law or something. Um, law is a particularly big one, I, I find, because they're quoting case law, something that they can't avoid. So maybe you can exclude um, up to I don't know, 20 words uh, and that might bring down their score in many cases. Um, another thing you can do, so say I've excluded my um, sources now, but I have actually excluded something incorrect that I didn't mean to. So the BBC News one here, I can go back and restore that as well. And I can do that for all of these if I need to. I could restore them all or restore individual ones back to where it needs to be. Um, another thing you can do from here, but not necessary because it's easier to do from the inbox, is you can also download the paper. Um, so if you want to know how to download all your papers, check out the Turnitin Tips and Tricks one. And you'll see how to download all the papers nice and easily rather than doing it individually like this. So my last thing to do really is give the student a final score. Um, actually, no, I'm going to give them a score of one, which in my case means remediation because uh, I've got such a high percentage. Uh, and then from here, I can actually flip to my next student if I need to. So I've got a drop down list. Uh, and if I had more students in here, I would see all of them. I can use these back and forward arrows. To, to go through these if I need to uh, like that. Um, so that is kind of covering most of the marking in Turnitin. Once I close it, it saves automatically. So if I were to refresh the Turnitin assignment inbox, uh, we would see the student score has come through. Um, but again, 
the the um, it all saves automatically. It's all online, so there's no having to hit file save as you work along. It will just do it for you, um, which is kind of the beauty of Turnitin in a way. It also can be a bit scary if you have a, a poor internet connection uh, at any point. Um, it can sometimes drop in and out. There we go. So I can see the grade there. So the student won't see the grade until the post date has passed, but I can see the grade I've given the student. And the same with any other lecturer, they will be able to see what grade um, the student has received. So that covers everything with um, marking there. Um, we will be doing a whole host of different videos. Um, not only Turnitin, we'll be doing Blackboard tests uh, and assessments, assignments, uh, and we'll be um, covering tips and tricks on those things as well. Remember, you can call the team. We've got Ian, David, and myself. You can contact us via email, but we're also available via Microsoft Teams. And we also have the um, Digital Futures Toolkit. Uh, the Digital Futures Toolkit has help guides and interactive tutorials on everything that I've showed you today, as well as it actually has the student side of Turnitin. So if your students are struggling with Turnitin, I would recommend uh, letting them know about the toolkit uh, and they'll be able to go there and they can get some help uh, and advice on using Turn as a service for their submissions. Um, hope you all enjoy this and I hope you'll catch uh, the other videos that we have and uh, have a great day, guys.